I wished I had words at my command that I could make a statement how happy I am to be this great church in this great meeting. The thing that makes it so great is Christ is lifted up. That's what makes the meeting what it is. That attraction, Christ lifted up. He said in his word during his lifetime on the earth, If I be lifted up, I'll draw some men. No, I'll draw all of them. All men. There's proof of that in tonight's service. People crowding in, not to hear Brother Kimball, but to see Christ lifted up. There are so many things we learn by lifting him up that we can't learn no other way. He came into the world to bring the material to make the church out of. Some of us are kicking on the material. Some of us are fighting the material. Well, last night I heard as I was passing out, somebody made a statement. I just overheard it passing. And he's got too much water in his sermon. You can't preach the gospel without water. Not in preach a clean. God's not in the dry clean business. So much dry cleaning going on now, they want to do everything that way. But God has to clean men with water. If there was an age, the Church of Christ needs to prove to the world God used water in establishing the church. I will go back to the days of Moses. When Moses was told to lead the children out of Egyptian bondage, he had quite a task, Pharaoh. So he finally conceded or consented to let them go. Well, it was a trip that they had never made. So God had to provide something to direct them. A cloud in the day and fire clouds at night. Something else to lead them. And as it came to the Red Sea, then God had to prove what he could do with water. A lot of people are fighting him. You can't even establish a church of Christ without water. Not only these others. I just don't have to mention them because there's a great big pile of them. But I just mentioned, I just mentioned this one thing and I'm not afraid of anybody successfully defeating this statement. That you can't build a church of Christ without water. This has got a little water, but we got a whole lot of it. If you ain't got enough in the church of Christ to bury a man, you haven't got enough. And if you don't know what you're burying him for, and let him know what he's doing it for, he goes down ignorant and comes back the same way. And you stay ignorant until somebody gets a hold to him and knows what the Bible teaches. We want to be frank with each other. Don't slide up and make like one another's right. We've got a lot of com people compromising and trying to keep them hurting my feelings, I'll try to keep them hurting you. We're not going to heaven on feelings. I read in the Bible where one man missed his son because he was feeding. He didn't admit, and bless the wrong boy. Amen. Amen. I'm not through with Moses. I'll go back and finish him up. There's a great lesson in dealing with Moses. He had to be led by a pillar of cloud in the daytime and a pillar of fire by night. And they got to the Red Sea, he was stalled it. One thing I like about him, he wasn't like us, he didn't murmur. He stood there because he had confidence in God that God's going to make some kind of arrangement. Amen. It'll rain. And God will make arrangement for you today if you want to be saved. He's already made it and somebody's objecting. Too much water in it. God has never saved a man since the church has been established without water. 
He can't do it. He made it that way, and he can't change his plan unless it changes everything completely. God don't want it changed. He put water in the plan. And man's trying to wring it out. And then another thing, no church of Christ, no church of Christ since the days of the apostles preaches to pre- make a man a member never have sprinkled anyone. The Bible says that scriptural baptism is a barrel. Now you can't bury a man a few drops of water. So we cancel that. Then Moses standing at the Red Sea. And you know what? He wasn't disturbed, just perfectly cool. What was the matter with him? He had faith in God. That's all we need now. Faith in God. Multitude behind him. Complaining because he brought him out of Egypt and don't know where he's going. He ain't got sense enough to finish his job. Or that's the way they're looking at it. But you know, Moses said, just stand still. But if you've got time, I ain't in no hurry. That's it. They stood still. Moses just had a rod in his hand. I'd rather call it a stick because it looks like more important. He had a stick in his hand. And God just told him to stick that stick out over this. And don't pray none and don't do not just stand there with a hole in it. And when he discovered anything, the waters were gradually parted. Oh, standing still and the water keeps parting. How far did it part? Clean across. Clean across. And after it got it cleared up in every way, the bottom of it was a little wet. Wait a minute, Moses, I'll send the wind through van, sweep it dry. The Bible tells me that the Red Sea was dry. In the bottom where it was, was covered with water, God was able to make it dry. And the Bible don't say what I'm fixing to say, but I believe all, when you get real dry on the ground, you have some dust. So there's some dust in the Red Sea. <laughs> oh, that was covered with water. The God that made the water made the dust. And everything has to obey him, though he has perfect control. Wind came through there and swept the bottom dry. And then he told Moses to march. Moses marched right on through there. And the scripture says, they walked through all the way on dry land. It takes faith to believe that. And every child of God's got to have enough faith to believe that God done the job perfectly. And none of them's feet never got wet. Dry shot. That's it. And if a God can do that, I'll trust him for everything he tells me to do. I don't care what he tells When he dried the bottom of the Red Sea, he settled it with me. I'm through arguing that God can't do nothing. He can do anything he wants. He wants to wash my sins away in water. That's his business. That's his business. And he does it. Every Christian in here had to be baptized to get rid of your sins. In water. And anywhere else. You need anybody to say he's a Christian and said water don't do it. He doesn't believe the Bible. The Bible says our sins are washed away. The worst son of the devil lived. The worst one that ever lived. Had to be baptized in water. Tells the purpose of it. And what it was for. Then somebody pops up and says, you know what, in that's pray. That's a dry job. And down praying, that's a dry job. God wants a wet job. You preach the Bible like it's wet. You're not smart. You're just sticking to what you read. You have to be smart to do that. I'm not trying to be smart. Don't get that in your mind. I'm trying to stick to God's word. And an asshole all the justice. You baptize and wash your sins away. And that preachers, no doubt, in the audience here tonight would preach a man, the sinner, you get your sins pardoned for prayer. Well, that's a dry cleaning job. You don't need to get upset about it. Just go back and correct your teaching. Your discipline and your manual and all that stuff makes a man clean and dry. Even Jesus Christ came all the way from heaven to be baptized. Very 
John to baptize him. Is that right? Suffer it to be so now. John thought Jesus was too great for him to baptize. And he refused. He begged John, suffer means beg. Thus it behooves us to fulfill all righteousness. In baptism, just remember that your Lord was baptized. Buried with Christ. Brother, I believe in preached it just like it's written. That's reading you also quiet. You have to be quiet. You can't bother this. Preach something they can't bother. And if there's any preacher or anybody in order to scold them off the track, we stand for correction. And if I can't uh, answer the question, I got brother in here to tell me where it's written at. If we know why everything is written, God write it for it. Why you wouldn't buy a home unless you got it in writing? We don't go to heaven on feelings. We go to heaven on reading. Search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. Scriptures will do it. God's not cleaning men dry. His son couldn't get back to heaven till he was washed. He said he loved it just to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, never went back to heaven until he was baptized. John didn't think he was worthy to do it. He said, just suffer it, John. Just suffer it, John. You know, think you're not worthy? Just suffer it. I've got to be or I can't get back. You know, I'm foolish enough to believe that God wouldn't have let him back. He's got that much faith. If he hadn't have done the job complete, you'll never get back up here. Don't look at me so funny, brother. He, he told himself, those are the who's up, and he included us when he said us. Is that right? He includes every man, us, to fulfill all rights. The Bible is right. Somebody asked me not long ago, how did you manage to baptize so many people? Teach it like it's written. You preach it that way, everybody that hears is willing to do right or do it. When you go down in the water of baptism, by faith now, Christ is down there. All the Bible's wrong. Bear it with Christ. I think that's Romans 6 and 4, but if my memory's correct. You go down in the water of baptism, don't go down there looking for him. You go down there by faith. You don't need to look for him. You look at anything and you know faith there. You go down there by faith that he's down there. You've got that to believe to prove your word of baptism. Scriptural baptism. No church of Christ in the days of the apostles had nobody down trying to get religion or get pardon. No, I mean nobody. None of the churches of Christ in the days of the apostles ever told us under the prayer for nothing. I mean, I, I mean nothing. We got men been to college and had their brains expanded. Walking around here, standing in the pulpit, making like. That baptism is not essential to salvation. Church of Christ don't teach nothing but water. That's a mistake. We do. We preach the Christ is down there in baptism. We preach that down there in baptism, salvation is down there. When you complete the job, you're a member of the Church of Christ. Every sin washed on, on the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 baptized for the same thing. And nobody got released. Nobody, nobody on the day of Pentecost got released. Nobody. I mean nobody. You're all real quiet, but amen. <laughs> amen, real quiet. I don't blame you. You're afraid I'll hurt some of your friends' feelings. I ain't hurt nobody. Everybody's enjoying this. Some of your friends may obey the gospel tonight. They said the order told me this years ago and made it a little plain, and I would have done it. I believe the world is going to demand the facts in the case. And if they don't, I've got to give an account for what I preach tonight. I've got to stand in the presence of my maker. I've got to give an account for every statement, every word. And I've got to be careful. And I'm asking real Christians to pray for me that I may have the strength to do it. And the ability to declare the unsearchable riches of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not to show out, not to make like I'm some great somebody, but to just please God. 
It pleased God. I think we have a scripture about please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. My preaching may sound funny and may sound foolish, but it's the power of God. How oh, God, brother? I don't know. Some Christians here said, now, I think people made, went too far with that. How you imagine? I imagine you do it. You got some friends here, don't want them cramped. Look what Jesus preached the word. He said, preach the word in season and out of season. What does that mean? It means when they like it and when they don't. I, I know, I know what it means. It's just a parable. It's just a parable. Preach it when they like it and preach it when they don't. Well, you know what he's trying to do? Keep us from being a coward and holding anything back. Let the people have it. People today want the naked, clean truth. That's what they want. They are hungry. They're starving for the bread of life. Just because they're not being fed the bread of life. The Church of Christ ought to be glad that she's the only church in the world standing up for the naked body. Amen. Amen. Only church in the world, Church of Christ, I don't mean no harm, that's preaching the naked Bible like it's written. And we are happy to know that we read it right here and it's given to us by inspiration. And the apostles taught it. Now God wants it preached. May God help you to see it, friends. If you've never been baptized, Father, the reason of your sins, and it may be that you came here tonight just to find out what, what is baptism for, or have I completely obeyed it. If you have, you won't be here tonight till you're scripturally baptized. And then God says, when you get scripturally baptized, he won't let you join nothing. He adds you to his church. This is the only church in the world you don't join. And if you know in these other churches, if you don't all oh, let them join you, they turn you out. But, but God Almighty says we're buried with Christ. They go down in the water of baptism buried with Christ. We rise, we come back, you bury one man or an old man, and you bring back a new one. Just in the twinkling of an eye, it happens in baptism. Buried with Christ. Romans 6 and 4, if I am correct. There is Christ, by what? By baptism, that like as Christ was raised from the dead for the glory of the Father. We rise, we come out of the water, we walk in the newness of life. Now there's so many of you much smarter. You don't have to be smart to learn this, you just have to be honest. Preach what you read and don't condemn nothing God says. In baptism, our sins are washed away. Not at the moment, Finch. I don't see why these great colleges that we have among the sectarian people don't find this. I met a man not long ago. He said, Kibo, we're going to start preaching that this way. He was a Baptist. But I don't know what he started or not. I haven't heard it of him. But do you know we're going to have to learn that the Bible says that baptism washes my sins away. Now what he means by washes does away with them. They're all gone in baptism. You ought not to go home till you complete your obedience. Thank God that the scales has fallen from your eyes. Thank God that your understanding has been developed. And that you understand it just like it says, word for word. John the Baptist, he baptized people, but he didn't use no ceremony. But did you know God made the man and he made the law? He made the law and sent the apostles out to tell the world that Jesus died. Tell them how the blood was shed and then tell them the blood was shed in his death and tell them this baptism that you're teaching bears him into the death of Christ where the blood was shed. The blood was shed in the death, and we're baptized into the death, Romans 6 and 4. But I can understand it, and I know all of y'all can. I don't want you to think I've been to college either. I better pause right here for station, I then at the kitchen. Well, what do you mean by that at this station? This is coming over on station COC. 
What is that? Church of Christ. The only station in the world preaching the gospel just like I'm trying to preach it tonight. But I know this is a station. Who is the announcer? Jesus Christ. Who is the board of directors of the twelve apostles? I didn't read this in no book either. I reasoned this out of the way the Bible reads. Twelve men started out on the day of Pentecost. Holy Ghost, general manager. Apostles, the board of directors. But I'm trying to organize the church and get you to understand this. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the best organized organization in the world. Completely finished. I ain't boast, just brag. Yeah, that's right. I am. I ain't going to boast a bit. But I think the Apostle Paul, I'd be in the grounds of a, a writer. He said, let him boast. He has to be permitted to boast a little bit. But I want to tell you now, friends, I'm awfully proud that I'm a member of the Church of Christ. I'm awful proud that I learned how to be baptized in what for. And the thousands of people that I've baptized, every one of them, for the same thing that Ananias told us all of time. And some of them now preaching the gospel like I taught them, and they're baptizing people for the same thing. And this wonderful organization here. You talk about integration. You're really trying to get every person saved from the least to the greatest. I'm so impressed. I'm stronger since I've been here. I see the Spirit of Christ demonstrated. I wish every church of Christ in America and throughout the world would preach it and hold it up like you. The elders of this congregation need praise. The minister needs praise. All the members need praise. I see a complete church of Christ. I believe the church of Christ is preaching it just like it's written. And men and women's eyes are coming open. And we understand the gospel as never before. Brother B.C. Goodpatch is now has Brother Schultz, who is now on the directive. Brother Schultz is on there writing this book. And Brother B.C. Goodpatch is getting it out for him. He hasn't made telling him to get it out. And he said, Keeble, I praise your work. I just think it ought to be written in a book somewhere and left you on record. That's your God. Well, I didn't know how to do it that way. Well. I just thought I was just preaching it for the salvation of souls. But I want to tell you this. Back when the apostles were here on earth, they baptized the people like Jesus told them, buried, buried with baptism. Down in the water of baptism, we could touch Jesus. One character during his personal ministry on earth just touched the hymn of his God. Is that right? Amen. He, Paul, Peter, and John went up to the temple to our prayer. Lay man laying on the steps of the temple. He's asking for alms. He got something he didn't even ask for. Peter said, we haven't got what you want. You're looking for money. John and I are broke. Uh, every gospel preacher, preaching broke. I never would have met one. But and if the church of Christ has to feed him, you stay broke. Won't get rich in the church of Christ preaching. Now, that's a settled fact. But Peter said to him, In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And the Bible said, Without a prayer, any morning or anything, the man comes sleeping and praising God. It's a wonderful story. My faith grows better and stronger every time I repeat those things. You'll get stronger as you repeat them. And as you read them, you'll go stronger. And I'm so happy tonight to know that those things are written that for our learning, so we can understand what to tell the people of the age we're now living. If there ever was a time that the word needs taught, being taught like it ought, it's right now. It's right now. The people are in an attitude of disturbed condition that they'll take it like it's written. They will. They just want it in right. Did you know you can go to the store now? And you can trade better and easier than you ever traded in your life. You don't have to see nobody asking the price or nothing. Everything's laid. Amen. Amen. Wait on yourself. Roll your little basket around and get everything you But be sure to check out at the counter. <laughs> <laughs> and they got another thing down at the counter. 
The lady or the damn man, whoever's there at the ad machine, just touches it like that. And if she said ten dollars, you might well go on out. That's right. That's, that's, they'll tell you that thing don't lie. And when you come up fighting this, I'll tell you this don't lie. Amen. This is God's pad and machine. Mm, that's right. Tell me, tell me, take this. You have to take that air and machine down there at the store. It ain't doing nothing to do this like that. Now it wants to hit the final lick. Well, that's the answer. <laughs> Hundred dollars and you don't, you stood out there with all the argument. Is that all? Oh, you don't tell him to wait and let me see you now. Let's count this up. Uh, beautiful. That's killing time. <laughs> killing time. You're running the man's business. <laughs> Brother, and I'll tell you, this is getting plainer every day to me. The gospel of Christ is plainer tonight than I've ever had it in my life. The more you deal with it, the better you like it. And that's what you do at these stores. Think of the weekly, or you don't have it now, but these chain stores, all of that. When they hit that last little, then get you the total, go on home. You got it. And when you go down in baptism for the wash your sins away, no need of offering. That's what the machine says. That's final. What is the machine? The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, God made Adam and Eve, but he couldn't make them till he made the material out of which to make them. He had to have dirt. He had to have water to make the dirt stick. <clears throat> That's all, that's all right. Ain't nobody going to bother that, Brother James. Now, <laughs> he made Adam and Eve, made just one, and then comes back down to take a rib out of that last one and made her. She's doing mighty well with him, too. <laughs> did you know, did you know, did you know, brother? The simplest thing in the world, and the best thing in the world, is the knowledge of the Bible. Greatest book in the world. You don't have to be a fool walking around. Just read that thing. You don't have to go to college. I ain't been to nothing. I never got higher than the seventh grade in my life. Then I don't know if I was good in that. <laughs> but the thing of it is, somebody like God and somebody like Jesus has had a whole to me. I know that. I know why somebody's had some superpower. Go through the world like this. Say what I say, nobody bothers me. Why? It's right. And I try to say it without boasting. Brother, I believe there are people here tonight going to respond to the invitation because I tried to make it clear. Did you know I want to say this? You all look nice tonight. Nice ties. Shirts is white. But you know what you really are? A big lump of dirt said not to have the necktie on. <laughs> That's all. You ain't so much after all. That's all you are. You ladies might be dressed in silk, but you're just a lump of dirt. If we ever recognize just what we are, we'll all be a little more humble. Just a lump of dirt dressed up. And look pretty nice. It's wonderful for us. It, God is able to do that. God's able. And he has done it. Made us out of the dust of the earth. And then he, he didn't make a did he, he didn't make the man. He, he made the man rather, but he didn't make the woman. He, he just went in there and took a rib and made her. I think I got that straight. I just looked at you to see what's off the track. <laughs> but oh, I don't let me get off the track. Keep it straight. I had woman come out of his side. And she used to walk by his side. You know some of these good women are walking right in those places where God put her. Right by the side of her husband. That's where she belongs. She comes from a rib. And Adam was created. He wasn't created. She was made. <laughs> <laughs> the rib, the rib was created. But I want to tell you, friends, somebody in here 
ought to stop praying for pardon, stop teaching it, and baptize men for pardon. On the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 were baptized, added to the church. Nobody prayed for nothing. We do the praying in the church, and that's what God wants us to do, and not at the monastery. We're going to have to learn this. And the quicker we learn it, and the quicker we unite on God's word, the quicker the world will understand the gospel of Christ. The purpose of the gospel. The reason God wants us to be made, he wants a new man. Every man coming into the world has to be another man made a new man. A new man in Christ. Another birth. Second birth makes you a new creature. That second birth, you're born in the world as a human being. Then I didn't get through with that Red Sea. I know there was a reason I'm hanging around here so much. I may go back and finish this Red Sea crossing. And when they got over on the other side, the enemy come in there. Well, I don't know what no world I was thinking about. But anyway, when the enemy saw that hole in there, you know, the devil was game. He didn't know who made the hole. He reached clean across and he plunged in there. And he hadn't been heard of since. God told Moses, now they're all in there. Hold your rod again. Waters came together. All that host of people destroyed with water. And if God can destroy a whole nation with water, he can destroy our sins with water. I got it that time. I know I know this is the point I need to make. I know it is, and I wouldn't have had you to leave here without making this or nothing in the world. The whole thing was drowned with water. All my sins are moved away from there and canceled with water. Brethren, brethren, all our sins, everybody in the Church of Christ, I don't care who you are, you understood your sins were washed away. Our brethren preach it straight. They preach it straight. In baptism, you rise to be baptized to wash your sins away. And if you haven't been baptized for that purpose, you are, according to the Scriptures now, still in your sins. You've got to be baptized. What God says is far. Let me go over it again because you're looking right. <laughs> and the nurse told Saul of Tarsus to rise. He, he was down praying. He made him stop. I wish every church would stop the sinner when he goes to praying and tell him what to do to get pardoned. And down praying needs somebody to tell him. He's honest. He's sincere. But he's sincerely wrong. Rise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Oh, how many people in here tonight, if you just bow to God's word the least bit, you'd be, you wouldn't leave the building until you was baptized to wash your sins away. And God then will do what? Add me to his church. Please, please, why not come? Why not bow? Why not? You are said enough to save the whole world. I not surrender. Brother Keewell, I was baptized, but I didn't know what it was for. They didn't tell me. And now's the time to correct that mistake. Just correct it. And you'll always be happy. You'll always be glad you did correct it. Because you're doing it like God commands. That baptism, according to Jesus Christ and the apostles, washes my sins away. I know right where my sins were washed away. I know when they were washed away. I know what church. He added me to it. I know that. God added to the church daily, such as should be said. May God bless you, brother. And I believe somebody here tonight, brother White, will obey the gospel. Somebody will listen to the truth, and somebody that's gone astray out in the world after obeying the gospel and backslidden will be returned tonight. Why not come? Don't bring disgrace on the church. Get in the church and live it so you won't call people, cause people to speak slightly of the church. You do that. Don't do that. Live the life so people can speak well of the church. Don't bring reproach on the church of Christ by drinking beer and whiskey and dipping snuff, all that stuff. Throw them boxes of snuff away to go out there here tonight. And did you know no good mother wants to show her girl how to smoke cigarettes? No good mother. A no good mother, real good Christian mother, wants that daughter to smoke cigarettes. 
I, I think the worst looking thing you ever see is a nice, clean looking young lady smoking cigarettes. Pitiful looking sight. The home should be the very place where God is. So the children can touch mother and touch father and get the inspiration of the church and all these things. And especially what I ask you as you Christians, please get that bottle of beer out of the fridge there. You get off of quiet, this is quieter than you've been in many years. I'm talking in the interest of the church. When I was preaching in San Bernardino, California, one white lady came forward one night and she said, Brother Keeble, after I got home, I suppose five or six bottles will be out of the fridge. I said, you showed me what I was doing and sitting them children looking at that all the time. I said, you told me that's raising drunk that you're tempting your children every day. Most every mother and father in here knows I'm telling the truth. You know I'm telling the truth. I'm just warning you, that's all. I came here to do that. No doubt God guided the brother to call me so I could talk about these things. It makes him a better man. It makes all of us better to know the danger of these things. Christians, Christians, let's let our light shine. Let our light shine before men that others may see our good works and glorify God. That's the only way to do it. And sometimes a preacher accidentally starts smoking too. He ain't fit to preach. Any preacher that smokes cigarettes and chews tobacco and any woman that did snuff and everything, not fit to raise the church. I know what I'm talking about. You Someday you'll be glad that somebody touched on this. You're going to have to do it. I, I met a white lady not long ago up here at Linville, Tennessee. She said, I've been dipping snuff 50 years. I throw the box away as I'm leaving the tent. That's about three weeks ago. She come over to have a stop just to tell me I throw it in a way if I was going up the street in the car. I'm allowed to do that tonight. So make a lot of people here throw them things away. I'm going to do it. I believe this people in here wants to be saved just as well as that lady did. A little old box of snuff, I wouldn't let it whip me. I'd whip it. And brother, you puff around you with these cigars and cigarettes in your mouth, whip that thing. Flip it out the wind it goes. Don't take the church's money and buy those things. That's God's money. Amen. Amen, brother. I don't know who's smoking, but you're almighty quiet. <laughs> I don't know who he is. It doesn't matter. I don't have to know. It just preach the word. In season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke and exhort. With all long suffering and God. Brother, now, I, I, I'm happy as I ever was in my life. I guess you can see that. I think I'm doing good. I think you all appreciate what I'm saying. Nobody's mad. Nobody mad in here. In my conclusion, is there one precious soul that give up the world, turn their back on the world, and come to Christ tonight and start a new life? A new life, a determination to keep yourself unspotted from the world. That's all we need to do. It's easy. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Brother, please remember those things and do that. Straighten it up tonight. Do it tonight. And you that are not haven't been baptized to wash your sins away, do it tonight. Do it away. That's the only way that you can get rid of your sins is in baptism. And then live a clean life the remainder of your days. I think I'm right. I think God will endorse everything I've said here tonight. I hope he does. And if he does, and I hope I see my mistake before it's too late. God bless all of you. God bless you. And somebody ready. Somebody waiting to confess Christ. Somebody willing to be buried with Christ. Somebody wants to become a Christian. If you do, I will stand. Won't you come?